I'm here with Bruno. Hello. Who is, um, I almost said the guy here, but you are the producer yes. of the Brain Cloud and Sage Yarn. And we were hanging out today doing a photo shoot for the Waveform Mittens that was a collaboration between us. And we've like talked a lot on Instagram, but this is the first time that we've met. And I was like, hey, do you want to like do a sort of interview thing? And we're doing that. So I've never done this before. I think you have it either. Nope. But um, we're just going to chat and like what Ruth is doing is super interesting. And we're both in central Germany, really close to each other. It took an yeah. hour to get here on the train. So we figured, why not? So we're going <laughs> to party. So, yeah. so why don't you just start by like telling us about you and sure. like yarn journey stuff. Yeah, sure. And also like how you started knitting if you want to talk about that. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, so my name is Ruth, and I live here in a little city called Marburg with my husband and our son. Um, and I've lived here for about five and a half years now. And I actually started knitting, well, I started knitting when I was like 16 or 17, I learned from my grandma. But I made like this really ugly, well, it was supposed to be a scarf, but I'm a very tight knitter, so it was like, it was like this, and then when it got too tight, my grandma would like knit for a little bit, and then it would like go back to how it was like, yeah. and then it would get tight again. So then it was really ugly, and I really enjoyed like the process and doing it together with her. But then I was like, I just kind of put it away, and then I didn't really um, touch it again. Yeah. And then when I moved here, I was like, yeah, like the first year that I lived here, I just was like taking language courses and kind of like trying to find my path a little bit. And I picked up knitting again, and it was like just a really good like. Well, I picked up knitting, and at the same time, I like joined Instagram, so like these two things kind of like collided, and then yeah. I was like, I started knitting and I realized like, the, I think I realized like the potential of what you could do with knitting, so it just kind of like all came together and it was like a really good like project for me to have, like something for myself that was fun, but also like I was learning new things and... Yeah, and then you also found that community. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I, yeah. I started knitting way before I like found the, the <laughs> Instagrams. <laughs> Like once I found that, I think it became more of a thing for me because yeah, it's totally. like you just realize like, oh, I'm not alone, which is also really good as an expat. Totally, so, <laughs> yeah, totally. And it was like it was something that was like my own that I felt like I could do and I could interact with people like still in English, and I felt like yeah. competent. Yeah. And, like, while, yes. while like a lot of other things were new, and I was like trying to deal with that. So yeah. So that's how I started knitting again, and then like I was kind of like. I don't know, it was just like this journey of like finding and figuring out what I was going to do here in Germany and like what I could do and I kind of like, I had this like desire to like do something in this industry but it was kind of like a roundabout yeah. <laughs> way to figure out what. Yeah. So I started like with an Etsy shop and I tried selling like knitted things but it wasn't, it, I just, I don't know, like it wasn't really for me, like I didn't really like knitting the same thing over and over again. So then I was like, okay, well maybe not this. And then I designed patterns for a little bit, which we've already talked about a bit, but, and I enjoy designing patterns, but it's a big challenge. Um, and so that kind of like, I would say like, yeah, I enjoy doing that, but nothing really happened with that until I was like a part of Woods, which yeah. is a book from Making Stories. If you guys, I'm sure that you've heard of it. Well, because we love it. it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so you should check it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I I just submitted this design for that, and I think that kind of like opened up a lot of possibilities for me yeah. because I realized like, oh, there is like a really interested community here that's interested in like you know breed specific yarns or natural yarns or where does their yarn come from, and also like being um, European based and specific to this area, which like was a part I would say of like my fiber journey that was really missing because I still felt like a really strong tie to like the yarn shops that I knew from Canada and like the yarns and the like, you know, the knitting community there, which is yeah. really great, but it's also like far from me. So right. that was kind of like a piece that sort of came together. And then it was actually, it was about a year ago and I used to take, my son, he's now a year and a half. So last year I would take him um, for walks every afternoon and he would sleep in the buggy and I would listen to podcasts. And I remember, like, I don't even know what podcast. Like, I listen to so many, like, fiber podcasts. I listen to, like, the Wolfo podcast mm -hmm. and Close Knit and the Sweet Georgia show. Those were some of my favorites. And I would just, like, hear these interviews with people. And I remember, I don't even remember which podcast it was on, but it was somebody talking about, like, how they had hand spun yarn and they had an Etsy shop. And I was just like, I want to do something. Like, I want to do something with yarn and, like, see 
like what happened? And I don't know, it was just like, it was a perfect moment of like, you know, on my motherhood journey of being like ready for like a new creative venture and then yeah. also being a part of making stories and everything kind of came together. And I knew a friend of mine, he, he doesn't have sheep, but in um, his garden, like he, he lived in a small village, he moved now, but um, just outside of Marburg. And there were like sheep that sometimes came through his garden to graze. And so I was like, I'm gonna ask him like, what happens to the wool from the sheep? And maybe I could buy like the fleece of one sheep to learn how to spin it myself. Yeah. So that's what I did. And then I asked him and he was like, oh, I don't know, but I'm gonna ask. And then he is like really passionate about like sustainable farming and mm -hmm. buying local produce and like helping like small farmers or hobby farmers like also earn a living from what yeah. they do. So that was like a really interesting piece that kind of came together where I was like, you know, interested in the yarn and he like asked this one farmer and the, or a shepherd and the shepherd was like, yeah, I don't really know what to do with it. So it kind of sits around and then eventually I burn it or throw it away to get rid of it. And then, ah. so he was like, what? And then we kind of came up with the idea together that we could like buy some fleece from here and see if we could get it spun. So that's kind yeah. of what happened. So really it was like, now I feel like it's, a really great path and I feel like really like it's where I'm supposed to be but it wasn't completely intentional it just kind of like yeah happened and fell that's how the best life. things happen yeah that's how I got into singing too like it was a complete accident you know and it's like I think that those are kind of the best things where you found yeah. it by accident and you're like wait no that like totally. that feels right this is what I want yeah. to do yeah exactly yeah. and I heard recently um a quote that was talking about how like um once you figure out like what it is that you want to do and are good to do and what people want you to offer or that yeah. people are interested in, like that is like a really good spot to be. And I feel yeah. like for the first time like with this yarn company, like it's very in the very beginning stages, but I feel like that's sort of the path that we're on where like I found something that I'm like passionate about and there seems to be like a fairly positive response to it. Yeah. So I feel like yeah, it's a good although we didn't intend to be here, like I, I feel like now it's like we're here and yeah. we're like moving forward and it's good. Yeah, and I feel like it's kind of a good time. I mean, again, it, things have changed for me in the way that I think about yarn and knitting a lot actually since I moved to Germany. And you've been here a lot longer than me, but I've been here a year and a half, which some of you will know if you're watching my YouTube channel, I guess. Um, but yeah, it was like as soon as you move over here, the option to order yarn from the yeah. States or Canada pretty much goes away unless you're like really wealthy because the shipping price, it's mainly the shipping prices and then also we have to pay import taxes, which isn't a thing that I knew about because in the yeah. States we don't have it. I know in Canada you do. Yeah. Um, so if I ordered something from Germany, I didn't have to pay any taxes on it. Um, so I found that out the hard way actually when I ordered oh, no. a sweater's quantity of Madeline Tosh as That's my like moving gift to myself. And I like barely spoke German and the guy's asking me for like 35 euros to accept my package and I was like, why? <laughs> what? Why? Um, so anyway, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> the phone's ringing. <laughs> but yeah, so that door closed for me and I was really interested in what was here. And yeah. I knew about some dyers here that were doing sort of the same thing that was really, it, it's still really popular, you know, like the acid dyeing super wash yarns that are like really pretty yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And I knew some of those people, but it was really fun that I did a knit along on my podcast when I first moved here. That was a Euro Sash Cow. Yeah. Because I wanted to like, I wanted people to tell me and like use all these European sourced yarns. Yeah. And then, you know, I found it like making stories happened and I just sort of realized that like actually that is something that's really yeah. important to me. Using natural yarns and using things that come from closer to me and I think there's probably more of a tradition of it here because everything's older in Europe <laughs> and you know like that's where all these traditions come from anyway like knitting and fiber most of fiber crafts that we know of, a lot of them originated here and I think that I don't know it's hard if it's just a European thing or if it's happening worldwide but I'm feeling a shift towards yeah. that or people are starting to ask questions and there's still no problem with superwash yarn or synthetic yarns and they have their place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, what I think is so cool about it is like, I don't know, you know, like I, we just did this collaboration and I just designed yarn from like sheep that live really close to me. Yeah. And that's also really cool just to kind of have that connection. And plus like a connection to you and it's like, yeah, totally. we were talking to you about just 
how collaborations are important to us, <laughs> and that it's just been really fun to like really connect with other people in this community that we all really love. And yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I feel like I wouldn't be here without collaborations because I think, like, I mean, first of all, I don't think I would have the courage to like to continuously put myself out there without like the support that I've had yeah. from people. But also, I just think like, yeah, like I mean, once I started collaborating, I was like, well, I don't really, I'm not really interested in running my business without collaborations. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. So that's how I feel. Yeah, and it's yeah. also like, I mean, I feel about it that it, it makes good business sense. We were talking about this too, how we have to wear so many hats and some of them make us uncomfortable. Yeah, and I feel yeah. uncomfortable with like self-promotion and businessy stuff, but I also know like you have to do it. Yeah. Um, but it does make more sense from that perspective, but I think doing it from someone with someone else also makes it feel less about that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And because also like if you're promoting this thing that you're working on together, like for me it feels like I'm promoting it because I love this other person's work. And I believe in my work too, but like, you know, it's yeah. just like it makes it more fun and it makes it more effortless, I think. Yeah. And like it feels good to support other people and especially other women. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, totally. It's a beautiful thing. I agree. <laughs> So yeah, okay. Yeah. So right, so far you. When did you release? When did you launch Origin? Yeah. So we launched our first base Origin. Uh, that was in November, and we launched with these two um, undyed colorways. So I can hope oh, this one's upside down. Um, I can show yeah. a little bit closer. So this is the. Um, oh, maybe I need to cover my face. Um, yeah, this one. I'll go in front of you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> there. Okay. So this is the the natural cream. Um, and this is the one that Becky designed the mittens out of, so you guys can see that in a second. Uh, and then this was our other colorway, and this one is just the, it's called natural gray. It's just gray. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's gray, but there's also, gray. yeah, there's also a little bit of, like, brown in it. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but. Well, and I love it. I talked about this on my last podcast, too, that I love in the cream as well, that they're, like, little hairs that are, oh, yeah. like, black or gray, and it's yeah. just, like, it's really, really subtle, like, you really only notice it when you're knitting with it or when you really look at it you know but i just i loved that part yeah, of it and true. you find little pieces of hay which yeah. i always i'm a sucker for <laughs> the fine hay in the yarn yeah and it smells so good <laughs> nerds i actually had a few people ask yeah. me why it doesn't smell more sheepy i mean it does smell it smells it smells sheepy but like i think it's not overwhelming although yeah. when i had like all the skeins of origin in my basement then you could smell them pretty yeah. good but yeah, um, yeah, and so these, like, this came from, the gray came from one um, flock, from one shepherd. He lives in a little village that's um, close to here. And then this white, or the cream, came from the one flock, the original flock that I wanted to get um, one of the fleeces from. Okay. Plus um, some yarn from a third shepherd that's also okay. in this area, but in a different, on the other side of our city. So yeah, so we have a lot of sheep here. Um, which is good for yeah. us because yeah. we're working on expanding. So we are working on getting more of this base, the origin, which is the three ply woolen spun yarn. Um, and it's like a DK weight. I mean, it's 100 grams to 200 meters. So yeah. we're working on getting more of that. And at the same time, we are also working on, um, hopefully this year, getting at least two more bases with um, different breeds as well. So oh, right now we are both merino. Yeah, and that was like I mean I like merino. It wasn't intentional though. It just happened to be like yeah. But it, shepherds it doesn't were, feel like yeah. all merino. No, like, it's not. I, I do feel like yeah. because some I feel like when you say merino, some people understand soft, and it's not soft. I mean no, it's not. It's also not extremely scratchy. It's it's a natural yarn. Yeah, it's a farm yarn. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, but anyways, it wasn't intentional that it's all merino. That just happened to be like what the shepherds had that we yeah were in contact with so yeah and are, are you also going to then get different weights and yeah that's kind of like all in the works yeah so i don't know too, actually too much about that yet but and we are um hoping to um also have dyed colorways at some point but cool that's because you did why don't you show well I'll yeah these really fast. yeah show the mittens yeah um so these are the waveform mittens and yeah, as you can see, I mean, it's a fairly simple pattern because I really wanted to just show off the other, to be honest. And then also I've added, um, these are all optional in the pattern, but options for little buttonholes that you can make so that um, 
you know, we have this farm yard, but if you want to use your modern cell phone, or even I find like having having the thumb and having the index finger is super helpful for like grabbing keys or like if I need to grab my like credit card or my train pass or whatever. So those are optional, but I've always loved putting those in my mittens, so I put those in there. And then you have something you yeah. like to dye. Yeah, so I, I dyed these ones. This is the same pattern. Um, there. Um, and this was this was a cream base that I just dyed um, using uh, extract called Kutch. Um, it's a natural extract. Yeah, and a battery dyed. Yeah, so that was them. Um, and I did the thumb brush and hole as well. Um, yeah. I mean, that's all kind of They're super awesome. Say. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I like them too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So what, do you want to show the other things you have? Because our friend Marina, hi Marina, if you're watching this, um, also designed a hat. Yeah, I just thought I could show like maybe a few, a little bit more of like how it knits up and stuff yeah. like that. So this was the lawn hat, which Marina designed for our launch. Um, Marina's the wool club yes. on Instagram yeah. and that's her design company. Yeah, and um, she named this for um, the lawn, which is the river that is um, that runs through. Oh yeah, that's so, also yeah. like the name of the train station. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. connect that, but yeah. yeah. So that's what that means. Yeah, yeah. And then I just thought, like, I can show you this. I'm knitting this sweater right now for my husband of the gray, because um, I just think oh, it's yeah. like yeah. something that's interesting yeah. about how things um, knit up. So I am especially different gauges. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I'm really curious about like how this is going to be after um, blocking because the swatch like really um, changed after blocking. I don't know. If people say it bleed. Yeah, that sounds funny, but it did. <laughs> yeah, and I think it softens a little bit. Yeah, too. totally. Yeah, yeah. So this is just the sweater that I'm yeah. making for But me. also, a good shark, this is kind of related, kind of not, for, and I haven't tried this myself, but I know for people who, like, sometimes I hear from people, I want to knit with more rustic yarns, but, like, I'm really sensitive. Yeah. And that's, like, a legitimate concern. Um, and this isn't super rough. Like, I am not sensitive at all. I knit a cardigan yeah. in Let Lopi, which a lot of people just like can't even stand and I can wear it without anything under it. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. But I have heard that if you want to make it softer, you can block it with um, conditioner, but get like a really natural oh, conditioner. Interesting. Because okay. and it makes sense because yeah. it's just like our hair, right? It's a natural fiber. Yeah. But also because of that, just keep it all natural. It's good to just find something without chemicals in it, you know. Yeah. Go to like a hippie store and yeah. <laughs> get something. But I've heard that that really helps. Yeah. Well, they would say like if anybody is interested in the mitten kits, the the cream is less rustic than the yeah. yeah. And we, I'm glad we said mitten kits because we yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We both if been like that. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to knit the mittens, <laughs> you can. <laughs> Please. Yeah. We knit the mittens. We yeah. love that. Yeah. So um, on March first, yeah. we are launching. I'll be launching the pattern. So you can also get the pattern separately, but you shouldn't. You should get a kit. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so yeah. you can get one skein of Origin either in the cream or the gray, Yeah. and then you'll also get a digital download of the pattern, so um, we haven't really discussed this, but the way that I, yeah, the way that we, you'll, you'll get like an email with the, um, with the code, Yeah. so you won't get the pattern physically, but you'll get a code to download it for free because you will have already paid for it. Yeah, okay. exactly. So yeah. you're getting both together. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a little bit of the preview of some of the yarn that I started preparing for your kids. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the pattern's pretty much done, as you know, since you've yeah. it. So, yeah. We're good. And it's written and charted, and I don't know what else to say about it. Yeah, two sizes. Two sizes, yeah. Um, I did a video tutorial for how to do the buttonhole, which is always yeah. an event. And one skein will be more than enough for Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can see with my video left over there. Yeah, I have a lot left over. I have a lot left over, too. I have all this left over. Yeah. Which is good. We were chatting because yes. uh, Ruth also gave me a skein of the gray, which is very nice. And I'm <laughs> thinking I'm going to maybe like incorporate the cream in there somehow to start better color work or something. Cause they look really good together as well. So, buy two kits. <laughs> and make two pairs. Or, I don't know. <laughs> so, after discussion. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the kits again are going up on March 1st at raincloud and sage.com. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they will be 19 euros, which is a pretty good deal for a pattern and some yarn to make some mittens. Yeah. And plus shipping, of course. But the good thing, too, if you are in North America, 
is that shipping prices from Germany are like super reasonable. Yeah. It's going the other way, not reasonable. <laughs> it would probably be, I don't know, 20 bucks or something yeah. to ship this, but going the other way, like, do you know what that would cost? Uh, well, I mean, the kids are all one skein, so it'll be up, like, under seven euros. Yeah. 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 So it's really not that bad if you're abroad and want to take your hands. Yeah. Some of it. It's a good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else we should talk about? Um, do you want to talk about your making stories? Do you want to talk about designing? Do you want to talk about your kids? Do you want to talk about <laughs> how we're German it is? Yeah, <laughs> German is hard. Because I'm in German. How about German? No. Oh, no, no, no. Germans are going to watch this and be like, what are you saying? <laughs> Crazy North American. Um, yeah, I don't know. That was kind of, that's it. I think yeah. that's what I have to say for now. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. But, oh, this is very important. Where can people find you? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you can find our yarn company at rainclubandsage.com. We're also on Instagram at Ring Cloud and Sage. And then you can find me on Instagram at Ruth Verabai. That's my last name. It's a little hard to spell. Maybe you can put it somewhere. Yeah, I will definitely. Yeah, I'll probably put it on the screen and I'll link all of this stuff below the video as well. So that yeah. it's really easy to find. Um, do you have a newsletter? I do have a newsletter. You can sign up for that on our website. Amazing. And that's yeah. probably a really good idea if you're interested in the kits. Yeah. Also, that's because true. we've been complaining a lot about the Instagram algorithm and. <laughs> How is yeah. that changing? I mean, it's frustrating for businesses and for consumers, I think. But also what you can do is you can turn on post notifications. So if you want to make sure that you know when the kits go live, you could also turn on Instagram notifications for Rain Cloud and Sage or for me as yeah. a fan on it, and we'll both be posting about it. Yeah. Um, I just thought of something else to say, and then it went out of my head. Oh, the time. Oh, yeah. I go up at 7 p.m. Central European time, yeah. Yeah. which is... 1 p.m. in the, on the east coast of the United States in Canada. Okay. Yeah, and on the west coast it's 10 a.m. Yeah, and in Chicago because that's where I'm from. <laughs> it should be noon. So hopefully that's pretty international friendly if you're in Asia or Australia. Maybe not so much. No, I guess not. But maybe there'll still be some left when you wake up. <laughs> well, there will be, I mean, there will be a fair number, I think. Yeah, so. yeah, there's a lot of going over here, you guys. A lot of mittens <laughs> going out into the world. So. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Well, I can't hear <laughs> Thanks for being on. Yeah. So, my pleasure. <laughs> this is Ruth, everyone. <laughs> Signing off. Bye. Bye. Bye.